Hi, Louisville Middle School. This is Lori Watry. I really enjoyed visiting your classroom the other day and getting to meet all of you. Uh, this is a video of the painting that you're working on, and I've sped it up just a little bit, um, but I will give some explanations of what I'm doing as the video goes along. Okay, so the first part of uh, the painting is the same thing that we did in the classroom. I took some water and I'm wetting the sky area, and then I'm being careful to go around the top of the mountain, uh, not necessarily coming right up against the line like I mentioned in the, in the class because it's just easier to see when you're actually putting paint on the paper to, to do that. And so you want to have it wet enough that the paint is going to move downward on your paper. And if you can prop your paper up, then that will help because it's causing the water color to move down the paper and it won't flow back into the paint you've already put on the paper. And I'm also putting a little bit of blue on the right-hand side that's underneath the tree so that it will look like there's some openings in the tree foliage where the sky is peeking through. And then I change to my more turquoisey blue color for the bottom of the sky. And as I come around the mountain, I'm a little more careful and kind of um, finish off the sky right around the edge. Then I'm using a thirsty brush, so basically I'm taking my brush that's wet and I dry it a little bit on my paper towel and then I can go back while the paper is still damp and lift some of the color back out of the cloud. And now I'm going to mix a little bit of color to use as uh, shadowing under the clouds and I'm doing this while the clouds are still wet. We didn't do this in the class, but uh, you can also re-wet your paper um, in the sky just put water across the whole thing you just want to brush it on gently so that you're not um, disturbing the color that's already down and then use a little bit of burnt sienna with your uh, darker blue the the french ultramarine and it's just enough burnt sienna to gray the blue and then uh, I also put that uh, gray color uh, down on the bottom edges of the clouds. I didn't completely cover the clouds, so you can still see some white on the clouds. And now I'm getting some more paint because I decided that my sky was just a little bit pale. And as long as my paper is still damp, I can come in and add more color to it. It's a fine line in watercolor because if you come in with your brush being too wet, and an area that's already started to dry, you may end up with a bloom where the um, paint kind of pushes back against the dry area and um, you create this funny edged shape. Okay, so I'm just kind of brushing back over the sky, making sure it's dark enough. And remember with watercolor that uh, when you put your paint down, it will dry two to three times lighter than what you have while it's still wet. So if you think it looks light while it's still wet, then that's a good time to add more paint or, or let it dry and then come back and add more later. Just pulling up a little bit more of that color again because it moves back into the cloud a little bit too much, so I'm making sure that it got enough white for my clouds. I've already started the foliage for the aspen tree and I'm using different yellows, a variety of yellows and some uh, gold or a little bit of orange in a few places and a little bit of green um, later on. So I'm just dabbing on the color and letting it um, kind of blend and bleed together and um, not concerned with exactly making um, each leaf but kind of giving uh, the feel of leaves by just little um, shapes and kind of the movement that I'm doing is called scumbling where I'm just sort of making random patterns and letting the colors mix and, and blend together. I have also uh, spritzed a little bit of water on the paper and where the water droplets are when the watercolor hits those areas it will have softer edges and uh, then harder edges where there isn't a little drop of water. Um, I think for the second class, I showed that class, uh, that technique, and we didn't get to that in the first class, but 
um, your teacher saw it so she can show you what I was doing. I am also painting around the tree trunk so that that will remain white and then I can come back and put color on that aspen tree trunk later. So I've changed to a little bit of some orange in the uh, right hand corner up there. And one of the things that I did was uh, toward the top, top of the tree there is I left a few openings here and there because I wanted it to feel like the sky was um, showing through. So uh, don't forget to do that. You want your tree to sort of feel um, like there's ways that the, the um, branches aren't uh, solid of leaves. It, it needs to have a, some openings here and there. Moving back down a little bit. And I'm also trying to uh, vary that edge uh, so that there it's not an um, even edge on that left side of the tree. Okay, and now I've started working on the uh, lower portion of the tree. And the other aspen, the, the um, aspen that are shorter or farther back, I'm just connecting and not worrying about if it kind of blends together with the other trees because I'm massing those trees together. They'll still feel like there's uh, more than one aspen back there, partly because of the tree trunks, but also changes of color and... Uh, changes of height and things like that. So still a variety of yellows. I'm using both the warm and the cool yellows and some gold. And and I'm using my big brush for this because my uh, painting is uh, bigger than what you guys were painting, but um, you know, so it's still at that point where I'm trying to use the a larger brush just so that I don't get too detailed with everything. I think I start changing to some greens down in here. And then over in that right-hand corner, I have an evergreen tree. And so some of the darks um, that will go in that corner are because of that evergreen tree. So I'm putting some of the aspen colors behind that area so that it will look like it has some openings in the branches as well. And you can see I'm still painting around the, the trunks of both the, the bigger aspen and the aspen that are a little farther back. Oh, and um, before I started the um, aspen tree, I uh, made sure that my sky was dry. And, and right there you could see me spray with the, the water bottle a little, little bit of those water droplets. And I'm not trying to get a complete coverage of water. I just want to have little spots of, of water in there so that, uh, like I said, on the upper tree it would have some hard and soft edges. And there's an aspen over on the left-hand side, so I'm putting that in and some aspen uh, that are peeking through the evergreen tree. That's what those little areas of yellow and green are um, in between. So when you're painting in watercolor, think of layers. So you might think of um, 
painting the the layers that are behind other things and then adding layers on top of that. Okay, now I've dried my paper, made sure everything was dry, and I'm going to start doing the mountain. And in this um, demo, I did not leave um, whites at the top of the mountain for snow. And in the class, I showed you guys how to uh, leave um, the top of the mountain area for the snow by just painting some kind of cool um, blues and purples underneath the snow area. And you can also go in and put some color on the snow. The snow doesn't have to remain just white. We didn't, I didn't get a chance to show you that in the class, but um, snow can have color like on the shadowed side of the snow, or maybe there's just some little definition in there on that back mountainside area. So, And I'm using a variety of color there. I, I have a warmer hilltop because it was fall and there wasn't any snow on it just yet so it was very rocky and then as it's coming down I've um, changed to more of a blue or a blue green and I'm kind of painting around the top of the evergreen tree there just to remind myself that the tree is up in that area and then going around some of the tops of the aspens and uh, you can put a little bit of the color uh, in the opening um, areas of the aspen between the leaves Okay, and I believe I've dried my paper again. Okay, now I'm getting set up to paint some of the uh, darker green evergreens. And I have uh, pulled out some ultramarine blue onto my palette and then my warmer yellow. And um, you want a lot of color for this, so don't hesitate to use a lot of your paint because you want to make sure that you're your tree is darker than the, the values of the aspen around it. And I have also switched to a smaller brush and I'm starting at the top of the tree on the right. And if you don't have a tree on the right side of your painting, you can start on your other evergreens. And I'm just kind of making some random marks like the edges or the, the um, pine needles that might be in that evergreen and I am leaving some openings for the tree trunk to go in later and I'm also having some of the foliage or the, the pine needles come across the tree trunk so that it kind of the, the tree trunk peeks in and out of the, the needles and then some of that tree or maybe another tree goes behind my aspen so I'm painting some of that around that aspen tree's trunk And same thing with my evergreen tree. I am varying. It's a little bit hard to see since you're not seeing it closer, but I'm varying the color. So some parts of the evergreen tree are a warmer green, um, so it has more yellow in it, and some parts are a little cooler, so it has more blue. Just makes it more interesting to look at when you're looking at the painting up close. And it also might be that parts of the tree are in more in sunlight and other parts are more in shadow. Just kind of varying the edges a little bit there. Okay, I have dried my paper again, and now I'm getting set up to use the uh, sea sponge to add some texture to the aspen. And uh, remember, I take the sea sponge and I wet it, then I wring it out some so it wouldn't be too wet, and then I am dabbing on some color and using a little bit heavier, thicker color so that it will um, be darker than some of my earlier 
paint and just adding some texture using the sea sponge. And it's a little easier to see down in these lower trees. And you don't want to go too heavy with this because then it will feel overdone, but it's just another layer, give a little bit different character to that area. And also be careful you don't uh, get sea sponge texture in over the sky or other parts of the painting, kind of keep it right on your, your trees. Same thing with variety of color, so some yellow, some greens. Some of my earlier marks that I made with the sea sponge weren't dark enough, I believe, so I went back and added a little bit more in a few places. Okay, so I'm just getting set up, and now I'm going to work on the darker evergreen that's on the left side. And I believe I dried my paper, you just didn't see that, to so make sure that my colors wouldn't run down into what I just did. And if I didn't dry my paper, then you just need to be careful with where you're working so that you're not putting your hand into your wet watercolor. Same thing as before, I'm using the darker blue, the French ultramarine, and some of my warmer yellow to make a dark uh, kind of olivey or evergreen color and using my smaller brush and a variety of strokes at the top of the tree going around the tree trunk and letting some of those background pieces of land peek through the tree and then a little bit later on when I get down toward the aspen leaves that are down toward the bottom of that tree I will leave openings for those yellows to come through also. And you can see I've also left some of the white of where the branches of the tree will uh, become brown later on. Same thing for this tree. I'm also varying the colors. I've got some darker areas that are cooler and blue and some that are a little lighter, maybe more yellow. Okay, I'm starting to paint around the aspen that are peeking through. And there are some evergreen trees that are farther back behind that tree, and that's what that white area is on the left side. And I will get to those a little later. I'm not trying to... Um, mass those together with this tree because this tree is is in the foreground and those evergreens are more toward the midground. You can see that with my smaller brush, I'm having to uh, go back to my palette quite a bit to get more color. It my brush holds um, quite a bit of color, but it's still 
uh, I have to recharge it and get more color and I'm also using enough water with my my watercolor so that it I can pull it up with my brush easily I'm not having to kind of scrape it off the palette in order to get it onto my brush so remember to um, make sure that your your color has enough water in it so that you can easily manipulate it on your paper Okay, I believe I'm getting, oh yes, I'm getting color out now for the the trees that were in the mid-ground and I'm going with um, a lighter um, variety or, or variation of the uh, greens that I used in the foreground tree and they're darker at the top because I want them to be darker than that background um, uh, hillside that's back there and then as it's coming toward the evergreen I'm making those areas lighter so that the foreground evergreen will be darker than the uh, the lower edge of those background trees and I used my lighter blue to um, add a little and I added a little bit of some um, yellow to it to get, get a green that was was lighter and now I am using some of the sort of the same colors so uh, that mix for that mountainside was um, either French ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna or a little bit of um, blue with some some red to make a purple and now I'm using some of those same colors to put some texture or some shadowing up on the top of that hillside Okay, I believe I have uh, blown the paper dry again, and now I think I'm going to go, yep, I am now working on um, some of the uh, branches for the tree, and so I've mixed up some um, French ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna to make a dark like I used in the classroom to make some of the uh, shapes that uh, are where the branches fall off and things like that on the aspen tree. So right now I'm just kind of picking some areas and finding some places in between the leaves that maybe a branch is, is poking out. And uh, unfortunately I, I think I missed videoing the, the part of the tree trunks where I put some shadow on the, on the side of the tree trunk my larger tree has some shadowing on it so I used some uh, cobalt for me blue and um, some of my um, cooler red to make a purple mix and use that to shadow the left side of the tree uh, you can use your um, either of your blues actually but kind of a mix between a blue to a purple to a, a warmer um, almost um, magenta color to um, put some shadow on your trees and now I'm also putting some shadow in on uh, not shadow I'm sorry the um, branches on the smaller trees as well and it's nice to have some of those branches sticking out but you also don't want to overdo it 
so too many could look um, kind of overdone. And now I'm using some of that same mix of the ultra French ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna to uh, make some of those knots and lines and things that appear on aspen trunks. And I would wait to do your little dots and, and things like that that are on the trunks until after you ha have your shadow on there. Because if you put them on uh, beforehand, if you go then to, to put, paint the uh, shadow color over that area, you could cause those darker shadow colors to um, soften or even kind of mix in with the color that you're putting on. So it's better to wait and do that at the end. Okay, I think, yes, I'm mixing the brown to go on the tree trunk of the evergreen. And because we're far enough back from the painting, it's just going to be hard to tell um, what's happening. Obviously, you can see the white disappearing, but in the actual painting, it's um, now become a brown. And you can see that my uh, values um, for the tree trunk and the evergreen are pretty close together. That's why they're sort of blending on the the uh, video here. And I used uh, burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue and I think a touch of my red in uh, the mix so that it would not be too gray. I wanted to keep it more on the brown side of things. And the red that I used was, would for you, would be your matter rose or rose matter. Okay, as I'm finishing up the tree trunks for the evergreens, just a reminder that while you're working on your paintings, you should step back every now and then and see how things are looking and see if you need to change any values or adjust some area of your painting and um, take a few minutes to pause and see how it's looking and I hope you enjoyed working on the landscape and working with watercolor and thanks a lot